Hello, this is Edel O'Regan. I'm here at the Cambridge Health Tech Institute headquarters in Needham, Mass, where we are busy preparing for our 11th annual Mastering Medicinal Chemistry Conference, scheduled to take place May 21 through 22 in Boston. We've run Mastering Medicinal Chemistry for over a decade in San Francisco, and this is the first time we decided to move it to Boston. We're absolutely thrilled with the response we've gotten from the delegates and also the support we've received from sponsorship. Thank you very much and we hope to see you all there. We've invited Renato Skrull into the office today to be with us. He's a long-term speaker for CHI and also has been at the Mastering Medicinal Chemistry many times. So Renato, uh, what are you looking forward to about the upcoming conference and what has been your experience at our Mastering Medicinal Chemistry conference in the past? You know, the beauty about these conferences is that it's a setting that's intimate in the sense that you can reconnect with colleagues that you haven't seen for some time. Um, it's a great opportunity to network. I mean, it's also a great opportunity just to see what's on people's minds regarding where medicinal chemistry is going, what are the kind of new things that people are thinking about, because as, as you know, uh, topics tend to be cyclical, things that are hot. For instance, a couple of years ago, this whole notion of uh, the contribution of enthalpy to binding was a very hot area. Uh, binding involves both a enthalpy and an enthalpy component. Um, very easy to optimize against entropy, not so much against enthalpy. So people started doing a lot of characterization um, to try to monitor the enthalpy component. But you know, from a practical perspective, it's been very difficult and most recently this notion of residence time has actually become, come to the forefront. I think a lot of this interest arose from the fact that covalent inhibition really took off, um, mainly because a lot of companies have been working in this area. Uh, most recently J&J uh, and Pharmacyclus &J got an oncology drug approved that covalently inhibits BTK and the efficacy results were spectacular. The safety margins for a kinase inhibitor were, were spectacular. So. A lot of the uh, prejudices, I think, in terms of covalent inhibition went away. And when you start thinking about if I can silence a the target, then if you take a step back, if you had a slowly reversible inhibitor where, where the inhibitor spent a lot of time on the target, so this notion of basically long residency time, you can elicit the same kind of effect as you can with a covalent inhibitor, which is a pronounced pharmacodynamic effect um, with potentially a better safety margin. So Renato, you're going to moderate a round table discussion for us at the MedChem meeting. It's going to be around beyond rule of five. Yeah. What can people expect from a round table discussion? I think the round table discussion is a great opportunity again just for people to share their recent experiences um, in terms of projects that I've been involved in, uh, particularly as it relates to beyond the rule of five and where this uh, becomes important in this is in terms of protein-protein interaction targets. Uh, which are you know, important targets, particularly in oncology, um, where they drive a lot of oncology diseases. But the, the, the issue with protein-protein interactions is that from a small molecule perspective, because the um, surfaces tend to be fairly shallow, it's very difficult to design a small molecular inhibitor. From an antibody perspective, if these uh, targets are expressed uh, intracellularly, and in a lot of cases are expressed in the mitochondria, antibodies cannot cross a cell membrane. The way that people have started to deal with inhibiting protein protein interactions is through peptides and aileron, a company in Cambridge that kind of came up with this notion of stapled peptides that induces helicity into the molecule, makes it more stable in vivo, and in some cases actually they get cell penetrability. Um, that's opened the door to people to take a relook at peptides. And there's also this notion of macrocycles, which again uh, are constrained peptides to be able to interact and disrupt these protein-protein interactions. And there's actually a great talk, I think, at the conference by a group from Abbott talking about the BCL2 study where this was actually a fragment hit that um, targeted BCL2. And eventually it became a large molecule. I think it almost approached a, a thousand uh, Daltons in molecular weight. Certainly breaks the rule of five from a molecular weight perspective and also from, this, from the notion of hydrogen bond donors and acceptors, it also breaks that rule, but the molecule has great oral bioavailability and is efficacious. Um, so, you know, there's less of an empirical guideline in terms of designing molecules that exceed 
the rule of five. Um, but you know, I think some of these guidelines are starting to fall out of the work that's been done. And um, that'll be a great opportunity to see how they did that. Great, thank you. So thank you very much, Renato. And we look forward to seeing you all at the Mastering Medicinal Chemistry Conference, uh, May 21 through 22 in Boston. Thank you. Great, thank you very much. Yeah.